Right, hello folks. Uh, we should be live, which is good. Um, okay, let's uh, let's check out. Um, that the um, chat's working. So um, let's see. Right, brilliant. Yes, so we are good, good, good. Okay. Um, is James Parrot good? Right, good. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, hello, um, who's in Taylor, Tammy, uh, Sophie, Coco, brilliant. Right, so I have a moderator in. Good. Now, um, often buff, you will be blocked, mate, unless you stick to the program uh, for, for this lesson. But good to see you, mate. I'm glad you're on here, but let's keep it uh, straightforward. Um, okay, right. Um, Brilliant. Okay, Matthew. So, hi, Harvey. Hi, Emily. Good. So, we, we, we're here. We're, we're good. We're ready for another lesson. Right. Um, let's see then what time we're on. So, I need this again. Um, we've got three minutes. So, um, yeah. Hello, folks. Great to see you. Hi, Georgia. Um, who else we got? Ashley, Tyler, Jenny, hello, good. All right, now, a couple of things before we start. The OBS, um, well, before I start, Alf, you need to turn the kettle off and out, mate, because that'll be live soon. So off you go. What? Off you go. No, it's off, out. Thank you, Chuck, don't be handy, don't come back in. I'm, I'll be in here for an hour. All right. Thank you. Right, there's, that gets rid of my son and the kettle noise in the background. <laughs> um... Right, so, um, yeah, Cup, some feedback from the last live lesson. Some have been out of fix, some have not been out of fix. Um, hello, Melanie. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Matthew and Kobe, I know it's a big ask again, mate, but in light of not seeing James Parrot in, are you all right moderating again? Uh, same rules, be strict. I'll turn the chat on and off as we did before. Um, hi, Emily. Um Exactly. He can't make a cup of tea because Sir stressed about his live feed and pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> and he doesn't need his son blooming, uh, breathing down his neck and waving at his all. So, um, okay. We've, uh, right, where are we? We've got another couple of minutes, so I'll leave it another couple of minutes. I'm just checking the chat, hopefully you can see that. Hi, Kate. Uh, good to see you. Oh, well, good to see that you're on the chat. Um, right, so... Um, Let's get back to the PowerPoint. So I am not looking at the feed uh, right now because you can tell I should be able to see the PowerPoint. Um, yeah, today's lesson, um, I'll give it another minute um, before we start, is about the developing model of the atom. So um, in a minute, when we've given a chance everyone to arrive, uh, we're going to start with a quick quiz like we always do. And the quick quiz is going to be on the on last lesson stuff. So it's on the, the information that was in the knowledge, knowledge organiser that was on the worksheet for last lesson, the first one about the structure of the atom and isotopes. Okay, so I'm going to test how much of that stuck in your brain. Um, so we'll have it on full uh, screen. So yeah, I'll, t I'll test how much of that stuck in your brain um, and try and like re-embed that because... All this stuff in those grey knowledge organisers, that's stuff that you need to learn, okay? Uh, so, yeah, we will start with a quick quiz shortly because it's 11 o'clock now, so we'll we'll make a start. Um, what you're going to need for this lesson, I had some great feedback from Kira that said, so why don't you sort of state at the start the things that we're going to do so um, you can sort of keep to time and people know what's happening in the structure of the lesson. So uh, that's a great idea. Uh, so thank you for that, Kira. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick quiz, like I just said. 
Um, then we're going to look at uh, how our ideas of the of what an, the structure of an atom is. We'll talk a bit more about atoms uh, when we start. Um, you lot are going to compare two of the models, two important models for you, which is the plum pudding model and the nuclear model. Uh, then we're going to talk about Rutherford's experiment and how he, um, the investigation he did to understand more about the structure of the atom um, and the conclusions that he could make from that. That was an absolutely pioneering experiment. It's one of the most important experiments ever done in science. And it's one that you need to know about for your, for your exams and stuff. But it's hugely fundamental, what Rutherford did, in terms of our understanding. So we'll give that out a lot of detail. Um, and you'll do a couple, of, a couple of written answered questions. I've got some model answers to show you, so you'll be able to mark your work. So it might be worth having a green pen or a difficult pen. Um, yeah, and that, that'll be that. Uh, it should uh, get done by 11.50. Um, one issue that I couldn't resolve from last... Uh, last week's lesson is on the and i know there'll be a there'll be a get around to this but i couldn't get my head around the get around the mac version of obs because i'm doing this on on a mac isn't uh doesn't allow you to show the cursor so i can't capture the cursor in the live stream which is a, a pain so I'll, I'll stop waving the cursor around the powerpoint and stuff because you won't be able to see it um so i have tried to fix that so you can see the cursor i've not given up but i just I need a patch for it because the Mac software doesn't use it. Okay. Um, right, good. Um, I think we're all set up properly. So if we go um, control D, you, you should be able to see the document now um, that is the questions that I sent through on Tuesday. So hopefully you've all got either a copy of that that you're working on or you've written it down if you didn't have a printer because that's what we're going to be referring to. Um, but yeah, let's let's make a start on this PowerPoint. So, developing model of the atom. Um, first up, quick quiz. So, question one. Uh, name the two particles, should have an S on that, sorry, uh, found in the nucleus of an atom. So, name the two particles found in the nucleus of an atom. Jot that down quick. Really important you know this stuff, okay? Um, right, question two. What is the charge on an electron? So there's electrons in atoms. What's the charge on an electron? Um, question three. What does the atomic number tell you about an atom? So um, there's two numbers, isn't there, that we use to represent the structure of an atom uh, that go next to the symbol of that atom. What does the atomic number tell you about an atom? Can we remember? All right, we need to be able to remember. Um, question four. Where do you find the electrons in an atom? All right, so I've asked you what the charge is on them. Where do you find them? Where are the electrons located in an atom? We did this last lesson, so this should be jogging memory. All right, so there's the first four questions. I'll give you two seconds to do them. Once you've gone through all um, eight and I've done the answers, I'll, I'll have a look at the chat and we can see how we got on. All right, so question five. Uh, five, yeah. So here we have a, a symbol of uh, the chemical lithium. Um, and we've got the atomic mass, the top number, seven, and atomic number three. And those are the numbers that describe lithium. Uh, and I just want you to tell me, based on that information uh, that you can see there on the diagram, how many protons does a lithium atom have? Okay, how many protons does lithium atom have? Uh, and question six, how many neutrons does lithium have? So using, the clue is in that, in that image, the lithium and with the atomic number and the mass number. All the information you need is, is in, those, in those numbers to answer that question. I'm just checking that you know what those numbers tell you. All right, good. Um, Question seven and eight are a bit more applied. Okay, so see if you can get these. Why is an atom's overall charge zero? So we know there's positive and negative particles in an atom, um, but the overall charge of an atom is zero, and so that it's neutral. Okay, why is it? Why is the overall charge of an atom zero? All right, why is it neutral? Good. And then number eight, what is an isotope? All right, quite key that question number eight. If you, if you can't answer 
that question you need to look back at the knowledge organizer from the last worksheet i gave you um where you'll find well you'll find the answers to all of these uh, but you need to start getting them into your brains obviously um which is why i'm doing this quiz all right um there you go i'm going to leave that on the screen for you and then i'm going to go but i'm going to have a look at the chat so uh, and you just tell me when you're finished and then we'll go to the answers because I, obviously i want to give you a little bit of time to get that done um so i am now looking at the chat real okay so uh on the chat once you're done just put a quick note saying yeah got that got the got the quiz finished and i can check that we've all got it finished and then we can crack on Ah, right, good. Excellent. So, Kira's saying, please slow down. That's fine. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'll show you. I don't get this good yet. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So, Tammy, uh, so it's that's Abby on your mum's account. Good. Um, don't worry. What you need to do is you need to look back at, yesterday's um not yesterday's <laughs> last week's uh sheet that i gave you and it had a knowledge organizer on it abby and that had everything on it that you needed so if you don't worry about this but the thing to do um is look back at this video when it's uploaded and then go through this quiz with your knowledge organizer and it'll help you okay uh right so you're still looking at the powerpoint if i um so the those were the first well, i'll tell you what we can go on to the answers so those are the first four questions uh we're going to go through the answers now um i'll just check yeah, good, you're still looking at that. Uh, right, so name the two particles found in the nucleus of the atom. That was protons and neutrons, all right? So hopefully you'll get that. Uh, what is the charge on an electron? That is minus one. Charge on electrons minus one. Uh, what does the atomic number tell you about an atom? The atomic number, basically, which is the smaller of the two numbers, usually, um, tells you how many protons there are in the nucleus and that's the key for knowing which element it is how many protons in the nucleus tells you what the element is so if a, if a, if an element's got um six protons in its nucleus we know it's carbon um if it's got eight we know it's oxygen etc okay if it's got one we know it's hydrogen the number of protons is is mainly what that's what the atomic number tells you and that indicates what element it is um, that also tells you for an atom how many electrons there are and we find those electrons orbiting around the outside of the nucleus in orbit means just going round in shells on the outside okay so uh, there's the first four mark them off as you go along uh, right question five how many protons does the living atom have well that's we know that's the atomic number so that's three how many neutrons does lithium have right a bit trickier this you to want to get this right you need to know that the atomic mass tells you the number of protons and neutrons in the center of the atom and if we've got three protons and the seven all together we must have four neutrons so four is your answer seven take away three okay uh, why are atoms neutral why is the overall charge an atom neutral it's because you've got the same number of positive protons in the nucleus as negative electrons orbiting round in the, in the shells so that the, the the positive protons are balanced by the negative electrons so the overall charge is zero and finally what is an isotope um it's it's a different version of, el of an element basically with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons okay so you can have all sorts of different uh, versions of of carbon or helium or hydrogen or whatever um and they've got they've all got the same number of protons but they have a different number of neutrons, so their mass number changes. And that's all isotopes are. They're, 
that's the name given to those different versions that have got the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Okay, good. Right, um, I'll have a touch score apart of eight. I'll have a quick, um, I'll leave that on again, but I'll have a quick check on the, the chat and you post your scores on the chat, please, so I can see how you've got them. Um, hopefully, we've done all right. Good. Right, good. Let's see how we're getting on. Thank you, Coco, for moderating the forum. Keep going. Um, you're doing a brilliant job, mate. I'm going to sort you out with something. Excellent. Well done. Seven, six. Excellent. Seven. Well done. Well done. Matthew White, well done. So, uh, Emily, good stuff. Right. Didn't understand the last four. Okay. So, what you need to do, so if it's great, um, what you need to do is, well done, uh, brilliant, Coco, keep going at that, that's excellent. Uh, right, awesome. Um, yeah, superb. Right, so we are getting our heads around this. Now, Sophie, brilliant, for being honest, because that's the only way we can, um, that's the only way we can get, um, feedback we, we you've got to be honest to, for me to be able to see if you can do it i can't do it there's no point saying yeah you, you got them all right so if you were struggling say you got four or less what you need to do is you need to look at this um recording once it's uploaded you need to do that quick quiz again with your knowledge organizer in front of you and you'll see that all of that'll just by working through that process you'll get your head round um the, the things that, you know, the last four in your case, so if you're okay, because all the information was there. All right. Um, Britt Well and Harvey. Um, hey, folks, Jason, Joe, uh, Ashley, fantastic. Melanie, great to see you. Abby, right, good. So we're, we're, we're getting somewhere. Kira, excellent. I'm glad you managed to catch up, Finian. Good to, to see you there. Okay. Um, Right, good, let's carry on. So, if I get back to PowerPoint, let's get into the main event. So, um, so that, that quick quiz took us 13 minutes on my watch. Um, so, we're getting next. We've got to try and keep these to an hour. So, as um, as Kevin suggest, just suggested, what, what we're going to do now, I'll let you know what we're going to do now. So, we've got a, a timeline. These are our learning objectives, so we need to describe how the, the model of the atom has changed. We've not known always about things like the nucleus and the electrons going around the, the outside, and you need to have an understanding of how our how our uh, the model of the atom, so the structure of the atom that the humans have understood has changed over time. And there's a key one here, which is point two, which is the work Rutherford did to change from what was known as the plum pudding model to the um, nuclear model. So all of this information that we're going to run through quickly on this PowerPoint is in your knowledge organizer, which is on the sheet that I emailed you on Tuesday. So you've got it all there. Okay. If you want to make notes, you can make notes, but, but it's there for you. And when you're doing the tasks at the bottom of the sheet, you need to use that knowledge organizer. That's for you there. The whole aim of this, the whole aim of teaching in a way is to get that knowledge transferred from the knowledge organiser into your long-term memory. So everything we do is trying to help you understand it, help you piece it together, help you get it into that long-term memory um, by transforming it and doing doing tasks with it and revisiting it and all the rest of it. So, But that's, that's the aim. If you can get that stuff to stick and you can access that and apply it, you'll absolutely crush your physics, all right? So that's, that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so this is... Um, this is sort of these four images show how our understanding of the structure of an atom has changed over time. Okay, so um, image number one, which mentions John Dalton, there, um, you can see for for a very long time, and it, and it was the it was the ancient Greeks that first um, well Democritus who first suggested this that that stuff like matter, like uh, water, brick, sand plastic you know anything that you can grab hold of you know stuff that's got mass that's made out of stuff okay 
that stuff, that matter, was made up of tiny building blocks. Okay, so it, it, this idea that um, you couldn't just chop up an apple and keep chopping the apple forever, getting smaller and smaller, at some point, theoretically, obviously with a knife you can't chop an a- a- apple to atomic level, but at some point there are these things called atoms that are that you can't break down into anything else. Okay, and, and this was a, an idea suggested by a philosopher, Democritus, um, and and it was where the first idea of atoms came from. Now, John Dalton, the reason we've mentioned John Dalton there, so you can see that first picture of purple sphere, that's just like, imagine it like a very, very tiny snooker ball. So we just thought it was like a, a solid little ball of um, stuff that you that you couldn't make any smaller, okay? It was like the building blocks, like the smallest bit of Lego in your set. You can't, you can add it all together and build things, but you can't get smaller than that. So we had this idea, very, very tiny, solid spheres, okay? Then we moved on to J.J. Thompson, which we need to talk about. And number two shows the plum pudding model, really important one for you. And this this model came about, so we went from solid spheres to a ball of positive charge um, with negative electrons, like, embedded in it, okay? We need to look at that in more detail. And then following that, and another experiment, an alpha scattering experiment, we went from number two to number three, we went from the plum pudding model to the nuclear model. And Rutherford developed this nuclear model using a, a very famous experiment, which we're going to look at as well. And then moving on from the nuclear model, we had Niels Bohr. And this was where we get the sort of structure of the atom that we learned about last lesson, where we have the nucleus and we have electrons orbiting in certain shells. And so... We haven't known that. We haven't known Niels Bohr's sort of model, number four, right from the start. It's taken time and lots of scientific uh, experiments and collection of evidence and assessment of that evidence and peer assessment of the evidence, all that scientific process to try and develop this theory. It's a classic example of a theory developing over time where people think one thing and then new evidence is found and you have to amend um, the model and then more evidence is found as techniques and technology uh, progress. So this is really what we're looking at, okay? Now, we're mainly concerned between two and three, but let's look at, in detail at these stages. So, number one, as we've said, like mini snoop balls, solid spheres, tiny, tiny, tiny. Democritus, there he is. He just thought about it. He thought that was the case. He didn't really have any evidence. He just thought it. Fair enough. You know, you have to be a, a revolutionary. He was correct in the end. But, um, yeah, he he suggested, yeah. And he, he coined the phrase uh, atmos or atoms, where atoms come from. Now, John Dalton, chemist, did some brilliant work on it, um, which we don't need to know about. But he sort of, he confirmed Democritus' theory, basically, or, or his hypothesis or his idea, um, with some evidence looking at proportions, how different substances come together, and he realised through the proportions that they they, ha- they had to be in little bits being added each time in the same ratio. So he was, he was a really clever mathematician, actually, John Dalton, as well as a good chemist. So that's where we... That's our starting point. Then, this guy, okay, cracking tash and glasses... Um, J.J. Thompson, he started mucking around with cathode ray tubes. Again, we don't even know the details of cathode ray tubes, but what he found is that atoms, or you could, you could get stuff to give off electrons. Okay, So he, he discovered these tiny minus charged particles because he could get them to be given off from atoms. So he discovered the electron, and he thought, well, if these little tiny electrons are if I can get them to come out of the atom, they must be part of the structure of the atom. So he proposed the plum pudding model. You need to know what the characteristics of the plum pudding model are. So here's the picture, and it is a ball of positive charge with negative electrons. Those little grey circles inside the blue one, the blue positive one, they're little negative electrons. Okay, It's called the plum pudding model because it's like a plum pudding where you've got the pudding, which would be like the positive charge, and then you've got the plums dotted in it, which are like the negative electrons. It's just like, um, it was to help people understand it, really, um, by using the model. So, important we know the details of the plum pudding model. 
positive sphere with negative electrons embedded. Okay, good. Now, moving on, that was sort of turn of the 20th century. Um, moving on, Rutherford, okay, 12 years later or so, okay, he did a, a very profound experiment, okay, um, called the Alpha Scattering Experiment. And, and he found that the plum pudding model wasn't correct because he gained some new evidence um, and it suggested that in fact atoms were mainly empty space okay they had a nucleus a little red dot on the image there on the powerpoint they had it they had a nucleus um good um which contained most of the mass and then the electrons going round the outside of this nucleus but most of the atom was empty space and most of the mass or nearly all the mass was in that little nucleus so rutherford's profound experiment was to discover the nucleus and realize that the nucleus was positive and that we had a, a, a small massive nucleus okay that was orbited by or had negative electrons going round the outside of it okay so it's a qu quite a change there, isn't there? We've got a positive, um, ball of positive charge with negative electrons in to a nucleus, a small, massive nucleus, positive, okay? Loads of empty space, and then the electrons dotted around going around the outside, okay? So that was Rutherford's model. Um, a super important one. So we are. this lesson is basically, you need to try and understand that what the plum pudding model was that Thompson came up to it with, what Rutherford's model was, the nuclear model, and how, what the alpha scattering experiment was and how it got him to get to this model, okay? Good. Now, that model has been um, developed further. So we, we end up getting more towards today's model and the model that we see in textbooks and the model that we saw, you know, these electrons in the shells going round the outside of a positive nucleus with protons and neutrons in it. And this we call the Bohr model because Bohr, who was a wonderful mathematician, he worked out and he, he did this theoretically and um, this was, um, in my physics degree, I had to look at the electron density functional theory, which is basically the maths behind Niels Bohr's energy levels for the electron. And it was, I mean, it blew my mind a bit. And and the thing that really blew my mind, that it was really difficult for me to follow the maths that he did. But imagine trying to like come up with that to be the pioneer. It's like you've got to have... A very very brilliant brain to be uh, to see these things and, and model these things mathematically as he did. Anyway, enough about me. What's the one about Neil Bohr? He's a bit of a legend because um, he, he basically kicked off quantum mechanics um, with the quantization, i.e., the, the specific energy levels in shells of the electrons that's been. But I don't want to get, I don't want to go off the lake. So let's stick with what we're doing. Right, Bohr put the electrons into energy shells. James Chadwick, you must remember that name. He discovered the neutron, don't need to know about how, um, and we also identified the pr protons. So um, there is an extension. The stuff I was waffling on about, about Niels Bohr, there's an extension there for you lot that is not need to be known, okay? But is if you are thinking about studying physics beyond GCSE, you need to look. There's further adaptations of this. Schrodinger adapted the Bohr model, okay, to give our current present model. So how did Schrodinger adapt it, you know, to give us a quantum mechanical model of the atom? What's Schrodinger's cap got to do with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? These are like huge fundamental questions that are, that are amazing, but they're, they're off the chart in terms of, they're just for you to get into if you're thinking of doing physics further on. Do not look into them if any of this other stuff is confusing you at all because they will blow your mind. Um, but hey, that's fine, isn't it? Right, good. Okay, time for you to do something. So, um, first question. 
and you can do it from the screen or on the document if you manage to print it out. We need it to compare and contrast the plum pudding model of the and the nuclear model of the atom, and I've put the pictures there for you to look at. Think carefully what compare and contrast means. It means how are they similar, how are they different. To get the four marks, you have to talk about, you can't just say, this is the plum pudding, and this is the nuclear, you need to compare with them. The plum pudding model has it like this, but the nuclear model has it like that. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes on the watch to now answer that question. So, in fact, no, I'll come back to you at half past. For me, it's 11.26, uh, and I'll look at the chat to help you. So, I'll look at the chat now. I'll leave that question on the screen. Crack on with it, please. I've got a model answer to show you uh, once we've had a crack at it ourselves. Right, go for it. So questions on the chat. If you if you're work you should be working through this now. Yeah, go for it. Now the question needs to be relevant to the work that you're doing. So if you type the question in the chat, I will answer it. If it's irrelevant, I will block you. Well done, Emily. And can we keep it to Sir or Mr. Barnes, please? Same as if we're at school. I know it's boring, but um, we need to keep protocol. If this is going to work, we need to keep pro protocol. All right, good. Okay, so Melissa, be more specific. What do you? What I want you to do, Mel, is I want you to. Um, you've got. It's like it's like saying how are they the same and how are they different. Okay, so you you. So um, I'm going to give I'm going to give you like a, a model answer in a minute, Mel, so you can see what the sort of answer would be, um, and hopefully that'll help you. But um, yeah, we've got we've got two more minutes left till half past, so I'll, I'll give you that bit of time. But try and try and look at those, look at your notes. I don't know if you've got the sheet, Mel, but um, try and write down how are they the same? How are the how is the plum pudding model the same as the nuclear model? And how is it different? And if you do that, you're going to get some good marks. All right. So, Abby, the, the person who got the closest to the one we have today, um, well, Niels Bohr was at the end of that list. But we're, we're talking about the plum pudding model, which is um, JJ Thompson, and how that's the same or different to the nuclear model, which is Rutherford. Yeah, so so that's why decent point that Tyler Rutherford's the alpha scattering practical was like amazing to get that done when he did it. Um, that's why he was a revolutionary. Um, hi, time. Don't worry. Um, you need to, if you don't understand or you're struggling, the first place to look is the knowledge organizer and see how. Those two models are the same and how they're different. Okay, I'll give you one more minute and then I'll put up my model answer. Okay. Right, good. Okay, so it's half past on my watch. So, let's have a look. Okay, so here's a, mod here's a model answer. All right, so what I want you to do is I want to look at your answer and I want you to give yourself a, a score at four, and I want you to add, ideally in a different coloured pen or different coloured type, anything that you've missed. So when we're comparing and contrasting, we need to say, this is how they're similar, this is how they're different. Okay. 
Both the plum pudding model and the nuclear model contain negative electrons. We can see in the plum pudding model that they're those grey little circles, they're, they're dotted about the positive um, sphere. And you can see them there in Rutherford's model, those little minuses around the outside of the nucleus. Okay, so that's how they are similar. In the plum pudding model, the electrons are like embedded in a sphere of positive charge, aren't they? Okay, but in the nuclear model, they orbit the small, massive, central, positive nucleus. So we've got that little, heavy, positive, central nucleus with the electrons around the outside. Okay, The plum pudding model does not have a nucleus. All right, The whole thing Rutherford did was he discovered the nucleus. Okay, But in both models, the overall charge of the atom is neutral because we have that plus, that balance between plus and minus. All right, so there's the model answer. I'll give you a couple of minutes to, to, to sort of mark your own um, and put down anything that you've missed from that answer um, onto, your, onto your worksheet, okay? So if you can do that now, um, I'll look back at the chat for any questions, but you need to be marking your work and getting that down. Right, well done Abby. Well done Lydia. Yeah, talk through no space left. You just need to write smaller anonymous user. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. I need to give you more lines, don't I? My fault. Okay, so again, don't worry if you are finding this difficult. What you need to do, that's why you've got that model answer. So say you've got two out of three, or you've got one, or you were struggling. Um, look at the bits that you've missed on the question and add them in in a different colour. Okay, um, yeah, good. Jenny, well done. Finian, well done. Right, with 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 there or thereabouts. Okay. Um, right. So just Yeah, absolutely, Tyler. This is basically dirt. Right, good. Okay, Kira. So, folks, just add the stuff that you're missing off the exemplar and we'll crack on. Remember, if we're timing out and that, you can look back at this, can't you? Because obviously I want to keep the pace a bit high and it's difficult judging who's where. So we're going to crack on. But obviously, again, this is there for you to see. Right, I'm going to come off the chat and see uh, what we're doing. All right, now, we've got... To get our heads round um, Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment, so we we need to see what he did to discover the nucleus. Because fundamentally, the plum pudding model didn't have a nucleus, and the nuclear model, hence the name, had a nucleus. The nucleus, remember, we just mean the bit in the middle with the protons and the neutrons that's got most of the mass in there, and it's positively charged because of the positive protons. Neutrons being neutral. So, what did he do? And this was groundbreaking at the time, still is groundbreaking. Okay. Rutherford got a source of alpha particles. Now, we will, I'm not going to cover what those are. We will learn about those lesson next, next week, next Thursday. All right. He got a source of alpha particles. Now, these are, these are a very small, um, so you can't see them, positive. Uh, particles. They're actually made up of two protons and two neutrons, but we'll come to those in a minute. So he got a source of alpha particles that were positive, and he fired them at a very thin piece of gold foil. So on your diagram that you should see on the PowerPoint, that little 
sheet of gold foil it's labelled as well that's the thin gold foil and that's just a few atoms thick it's really small because he wanted to try and get something that wasn't lots of atoms so he could just fire them at pretty much at one atom so he got about one or two atoms thick I think was the best he could do and he just measured where they went so he fired them at a thin piece of gold foil and he used this screen going around the outside to detect where they went Okay, so he looked at how the alpha particles were interacting with the um, the atoms in the gold foil because he wanted to try and see, based on how they were, what they were doing when they they got to the gold foil, what the atoms, what the structure of the atoms might be. Now this, so he recorded, he, he he could see where they went on the fluorescent screen, and every all of this was in a vacuum because. That you suck the air out of the experiment, otherwise the alpha particles will bash into the atoms in the air, won't they? And it'll, you won't be able to tell what's going on. It'll just there'll be chaos. All right. So all this was in a vacuum. He fired the alpha particles at a thin gold foil and saw where they went. Okay. Now there's some conclusions that he looked at, and I want to show. I'm going to come back to the FET simulation because these things are wonderful. So hopefully now. Um, you will be at C. On here, the FET simulation of Rutherford scattering. So, the, the beauty of this is it gives us the two models. So, this here, this the, the Rutherford one that's highlighted in the yellow box, this is just showing you a, a nucleus. Okay, that's what it's actually showing you in at the protons and neutrons very very closely the plum pudding which is now highlighted in the yellow box this is our positive the red bit is like the positive charge and the little blue bits are like the electrons so if we th remember rutherford thought well not rutherford jj thompson thought and we all thought that the atom was like the plum pudding so if you have a look at this one this is what he was actually doing he was firing alpha particles so if you see over on the left i can turn off and turn on these alpha particles so if i turn them off you can see our this is our atom that we think plum pudding model positive red charge with these little negative electrons these blue dots and if we fire our bags so i'll turn them on here they come and because the electrons are tiny okay and the plus charge is everywhere it, there's going to be you'd expect to see no effect on these alpha particles. These alpha particles would just pass straight through. So if the old model, the plum pudding model, was right, you would just get, you'd get nothing happening. You'd get all your alpha particles going straight in a beam, straight to where they were. So if we look at the PowerPoint again, I'll get there, I'll catch up, right? See that beam? Of alpha particles the blue line okay if if it was a plum pudding they'd just all go straight through you wouldn't have any of them getting scattered scattered just means to be like deflected out now what do you actually score let's go back to our model catch you up what he actually saw was this so if i turn on um if i turn off those alpha particles we'll let them clear out Okay. In reality, the gold atoms look like this, right? Now, this is where we need to switch on. The tiny yellow dots are is the nucleus, okay, where the protons and neutrons are. Remember I said that atoms are mainly empty space? Well, you can see that the dashed lines are where the electrons orbit round. So the, most of the atom is empty space. Okay, but because we've got these little nucleuses that have got protons and neutrons in them that are, that are heavy, they could actually deflect the alpha particles. So if I turn them on, look, here come the alpha particles. So this is experiment. He's firing alpha particles. Now look, some of them are being deflected by the nucleus, aren't they? All right, this one here. Hang on, missed him. This one here. Right, I've paused it. I can't point. I need the cursor at work, but that's a Mac issue. It's an it's a it's an operating system in Mac issue. I'll try and patch it. I'm hoping now you can see one pretty much central that has hit the nucleus and it's bounced back on itself. Okay. There's another one 
to the left of it that's sort of been deflected almost back on itself. So can you see, right, when Rutherford did his experiment, he fired the alpha particles at the gold foil, he, he discovered the nucleus because he saw these alpha particles being bounced back, okay? He discovered that it was mainly empty space because most of them, look, if I run it again, most of them are going through, okay? So most of those go straight through. Look, there they go, tush, 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 straight through. So most of the atom is empty space because most of the alpha particles went straight through. Some of them get deflected when they go close to the nucleus. Now, they're positive, those alpha particles, so the nucleus must be positive because it's deflecting it away. It's not capturing it. It's not attracting it. It's deflecting them away. So Rutherford, he sees that most go through, so the atom's mainly empty space. He says, There's one that's bounced back. There's another. He sees a couple of them being bounced. He sees very few of them being bounced back so that nucleus must be much much heavier have much more mass than the alpha particle imagine throwing a ping pong ball at a football right the ping pong ball will bounce back because the football's got more mass so he knows that the nucleus has got all the mass in the atom because it can just it can stay there and, and knock back the alpha particle he knows it's positive because it's deflecting some, and he knows it's tiny because most of them are missing it and going through. And that really is the fundamentals of his practical, okay? The alpha scattering practical. Here are our alphas passing through a thin layer. There's, there's two layers thick, this diagram, isn't there? There's the top layer of atoms and the bottom layer of atoms, okay? So this was what was done, all right? This is what he thought he'd see because we thought the atom was a plum pudding. But he didn't. He saw this. He saw them scattered. He discovered the nucleus. He discovered the structure of the atom so he could develop the model. Okay, good. Um, I'm hoping we're back on our PowerPoint. Let's have a look. All right, good. So um, there's three results and conclusions. Okay. Um, which I just talked about, okay? They are there on your screen. They are there in your um, knowledge organizer. They need to be there in your brain, okay? Which is what the next two questions are about, okay? So I want now, I've done a lot of talking, all right? I'm going to hand this over to you now to do um, six, four, six, three, nine. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to work on the next two questions. Okay, about Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment. You need to know what he did. And you need to know what the results they got and what they showed. It's a classic for six mark question, this. So I want us to have a go, go at it. The same thing is going to work. I'm going to put up a an answer, a model answer, after I've given you some time to work on it. Okay. I'm going to get onto the chat. I'm going to leave that there because I think that really helps you out. You've got your knowledge organizer as well, but I want you to have a go at those questions. So these are the two questions. Okay. Describe Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment. So that is basically describe that diagram that you can see now. And then question three, and describe says, this is what happened. Dosh, dosh, dosh. You know, a description says he did this. All right, three marks, so we need some detail. Question three for six marks. Last task for today, explain in detail the results from the alpha scattering experiment. So, you know, he saw them all go through. He saw some deflected. He saw very few bounce back. What did that tell him about the structure of the atom? Okay, so you need to line that up with, this is what he saw, this is what it meant. This was his conclusion. Okay, so... Have a go at those now. I'm going to, I'll leave that there so people who haven't got the printout can write it down. And I shall go on to the chat to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, timings wise, it's 11.45 on my watch. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to watch the chat now for five minutes. Oh, sorry. Eight minutes, and then I'm going to put up some model answers so you can mark it again. 
all right and after that it'll just be some extra resources for you to go and have a look if you're still confused and then we'll be done all right good so crack on i'll go to the chat Poppy. <laughs> right. Uh, don't don't worry, Poppy, if you've just arrived. Coco's just deleted your message. That's fine. Don't block Poppy, uh, Coco, because um, it's fair enough. She's just communicating. She's just arrived. Um, that's fine, though. Um, I'll check my... Yeah, my volume... I don't know if my volume's got anything to do with it, to be honest, because it'll just be a feed, won't it, and it'll be amplified at your end. But, um, right. Just put a thumbs up if the sound is fine for you, because if the sound's fine for some of you, um, it'll be... Um, If the sound's fine for some of you, then good. Well then, uh, go, go get this get this done. Right. How's it going with those? Uh, how's it going with those questions? So I'm just looking at the feed for questions specifically to um, either explaining. Right, good. So some people have got the sound fine. Excellent. Any more questions? Any questions on those answers? You should be cracking on with those answers now. Good. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Kate, Ashley, Emily, Sophie. Um, yeah, this thing. I'll keep it on. Brilliant, Poppy. I'll keep it under an hour. This feed. Uh, it's a it's a valid question because we only have so much that we can take. In these are the last two questions you've got to do. Um, these are the last two questions that you've got to do. Um, we'll go through the answers and then we're, we're, we're done for the done for the day. Okay, so gold gold is what was used, so that's what you need to remember, um, because it was what Rutherford could um, get a thin layer of. He had a technique to get a very thin layer. Okay, Ashley. Um, You've got these questions uh, require you to do the following. The first question, you need to say, what's the same and what's different about the plum pudding model and the nuclear model, which you did before? This question, okay, well then, Emily, that's fine. You can work how you want. This question, actually, the question number two is just a described question. So what did Rutherford do? You need to talk about Rutherford getting these alpha particles, firing it a thin bit of gold foil, checking on the fluorescent screen where they went, okay? And the next one, which is probably the hardest, or the harder question, is saying, okay, what did he see? What were his conclusions about where did they scatter? Did they all scatter? And then what did that mean in terms of what had he found out about the atom, okay? Um, yeah, so that's... That's what you're trying to do, Ashley, and I'll put up a model answer very shortly. Okay. Right. What what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna put um Yeah, so that's pretty good, Kira. Okay. Um In terms of what he did, absolutely. In terms of question two, that's that's fine. In, in fact, you don't even have to say about he noticed that they reflected. You just need to say he then looked at where they went using a fluorescent screen, and it was all in a vacuum. All right, great question. That's the that's the ideal use of the yeah, Ashley. Great. That's the ideal use of this this chat um, is for me to give you live feedback. You see, and hopefully help. Um, 
Yeah, correct. Well done. Um, the original experiment was done with gold, so that's what that. Okay. Uh, brilliant. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the answers answers up, so people can either check or keep going and then check. Um, so, model answer for question two. All right, there you go. It's on your screen. I won't read it out because if you're still looking down and not looking at the answer, that's fine. But just quickly check that that's roughly what you needed, and then you can add anything to it. Uh, we're nearly done, folks. We've got, yeah, we'll be done within five minutes. Uh, you've been brilliant, as usual, this lesson, so well done. Um, that's that. That's question two. Important there that the fluorescent screen went right around the gold foil because that allowed him to see him bouncing back. That's why he was like revolutionary because you would have thought he might have just put a screen there, but he put it all the way around and that meant he could see the ones bouncing back. Right. Model answer for question three. Remember you can review these on the on the on the upload. Remember the upload goes to the um I've forgotten the blooming name of it. Playlist. Come on, Mr. Barnes. The upload goes to the playlist uh, called Atomic Structure. Uh, that's the model answer for question three. Six marks, two bullet points. It's about the quality of what you write, not about how much you write. Okay. What the result is, what did it show? Okay. There's your model answer. Most of the alpha particles passed through the gold foil. This showed that the atom was mainly empty space. A few particles were deflected slightly, and very rarely alpha particles were deflected through more than 90 degrees. They rebound if they came back. This showed there must be a small positive nucleus with a large mass in the center of the atom. Okay, That's what he did. That's what he saw. Those are his results, and those are his conclusions. He discovered the nucleus, basically. Okay, So just add to your answers quickly anything... Uh, you need from those two. So that was the first one there, just quickly. And that was the second one there. Okay, I'll give you two minutes and then I'll just speak to you briefly um, to finish off the lesson. Well done. Good. very very difficult to know I know that the chat's useful for this but to know everyone will be doing this at different places and it's very difficult to you get you, in a classroom you get feedback of where people are and when you need to hurry up when you need to slow down and so this is just my best guess plus some chat feedback all right okay um, so lastly so that's Fundamentally, that's it for today. I wanted to speak to you about a couple of things before you went. Firstly, get your work done, and you've got a couple of options. You can email it to me, <coughs> excuse me, ibarns at furnaceacademy.co.uk, if you've done it electronically. You can take a picture of it and email it to me. You can, if you've done it either printed out and written or um, on notes, or if you... If you haven't got that facility, you can keep it to show your physics teacher, me or Miss Kitchen or Miss Ivy, when you get back. Okay? Um, neatly. If you've not done lesson one in the worksheet, look back on your Sims app and look back at the YouTube video on, on the Furnace Academy YouTube site and get it done. All right? Um, it's really important stuff. This it, it crosses over your chemistry and your physics. Now, finally, if we come back to our PowerPoint, uh, if you are still struggling, or you 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 you've sort of you've okay, you need a different take on it. Okay, um, if I take it to the browser, you can always um, have a look at. This guy. Here, let's go with 
So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, right. Uh, let's go with uh, if you type in free science lessons Rutherford, okay, you will get this dude, the legend. All right, and. He's really good. He's pretty dry, but he's accurate. He's factually accurate, and it's correct for what you need to know. Okay, so he doesn't mess about. He just gives you the detail. All right, so I would suggest having a look at this video, top list. Because he... he now, thousands of years ago, the ancient Greeks believed that everything's made of atoms. They thought that atoms are tiny spheres that can't be divided. So, that... so here he is talking about the stuff we've been doing. So this five-minute video that he's done is an excellent way, if you're struggling, to recap the lesson as well. All right, so there is some further resources. Right, we've only got a few minutes, so let's go um, back here. Right, um, yeah, and that was that. So um, I will sign off. I'll have a look at the chat and I'll stop the stream at 12. Um, so thanks for watching this. Thanks for turning up the live lesson. Um, over time, we're going to try and shift this to Microsoft Teams because I can then have my specific class in a much more controlled environment. And I can you can arrive and do a virtual lesson at the same time as you tap as it would be on your timetable through Teams. I can share my screen. I can do all the functionality that I've got on this YouTube thing. It's just um, as a school, I think we'll be pushing that out in terms of getting everyone set up and using Teams, so we can do this a little bit more in a little bit more controlled manner. But for now, uh, hopefully you're enjoying this. Or well, not enjoying is probably the wrong word, but like hopefully it helps you with the work. Um, yeah, I will go and sign off in the chat room now, but yeah, and then and stop the stream in a minute or two. Um, bye for now. Well done. Hi folks, I shall um, see you next week.